What's going on everyone? Dots Gaming from DotsGaming.com here and today on behalf of Nemesis Esports I'm going to be bringing you guys a Stamina Warden PvP build for the Elder Scrolls Online Markarth patch. So if you guys have seen the Nature's Wrath build on my website DotsGaming.com, this is that build, updated version of it for the Markarth patch. Thankfully this build really hasn't too much, you know, changed all too much since I originally started running it to now. It's th thankfully stood the test of time. Uh, it's a very, very solid build, very high weapon damage stacking build. If you are looking for a full proc set boy build, this is not going to be the one for you. Uh, this is a heavy armor, high weapon damage build. I didn't really want to play with a proc set build on my stand in, so I tried to put together something a little bit different than what you're typically seeing now. Um, granted, this isn't breaking any barriers or anything. It's relatively standard high weapon damage setup, but it is something that I'm enjoying currently on my stand in right now. And if you want to give that playstyle a try and maybe not use proc sets, then this is going to be a uh, good build for you to use. So kicking things off, we are of course using Balorg for our monster set, our two-piece monster set. When you use an ultimate ability, you gain weapon damage equal to the amount of total ultimate consumed and physical and spell penetration up to 23 times to the amount for 12 seconds. So when you are pumping out those Dawn Breakers, especially the high ultimate Dawn Breakers, you are going to be getting a ton of weapon damage spiked up from this two piece. You're also getting a lot of weapon damage from the one piece. And then this combines really well with our other two five piece sets because this is all about getting as big of a spike of weapon damage as possible when we're going in for a big burst. So we then also have Clever Alchemist on our back bar only. So we have two lines of health and line of weapon damage. When you drink a potion during combat, you are going to get a surge of energy for 607, 660 additional weapon damage for 20 seconds. So we're getting a huge spike to our weapon damage from Balorg. We're getting a huge spike to our weapon damage when we pop our potion. And the longer we're in combat, the more weapon damage we get too because we are wearing fury. So we get a line of maximum health, a line of maximum stam, a line of weapon damage, and then you increase your weapon damage by 22 whenever you take damage, stacking up to 20 times every half second. Um, this will last for five seconds until you reach 20 stacks and the duration is doubled but can no longer be refreshed. So between the amount of weapon damage we get from Fury, between the 660 that we get from the Clever Alchemist spike, and between Balorg on our ultimate, you're in combat for a while, you're on your back bar, you pop the potion, swap to your front bar, Dawnbreaker, you are going to be smacking people with a massive, massive amount of weapon damage and it's just going to absolutely blow them away. Especially when you take into account that you're getting extra penetration as well from the uh from balorg you're just going to be hitting them for an absolutely massive massive smack of damage and then on our front bar we because clever alchemist only needs to be single bard we are running the asylum's great sword so because we are using balorg i want to try is have as much uptime on it as physically possible and so the asylum great sword is going to give us additional ultimate based on how much damage we deal with our execute reverse slash so it just helps us get to our ultimate quicker since that's what this build is super heavily based around now, in terms of our traits and all that stuff, the traits for the setup that I have right here are a little weird. The uh, like the super optimal traits are going to be on the website right up. You can find that in the description below. But my gear, I have like my fury pieces also on my stamp crow. So I basically kind of put something together with the fury pieces to like make it work for this guy. And so that's why my attributes and my jewelry traits are the way they are. But starting off, we have, uh, I believe, two pieces, uh, five pieces of heavy. So we got heavy helmet, chest. Uh, it should be legs and boots. You want your uh, gloves and belt ultimately to be medium. But we are running a five heavy and two medium setup. We have one, two, three, four, five pieces of impen. I know right now I technically have six pieces of impen on, but if I was optimally trading this, I would want to run five pieces of impen and then either two pieces of well fitted or two pieces of sturdy, depending on if you find yourself dodge rolling or blocking. So it's really up to you kind of what you want to do there. I know the traits for this setup are a little bit of a mess right now, um, but you're going to want to go either too, too sturdy or too well fitted with five in pen. Like I said, that's going to be five heavy, two medium with the medium pieces being on your belt and gloves. Now you're going to want your front bar weapon to actually be a maul, not a great sword. Great sword will be better if you want to use onslaught, but if you use Dawnbreaker, you're going to probably want to use a maul. And then you're going to want to use a weapon and spell damage glyph, Nern Honed. Back bar is also going to be a Nern Honed, Nern Honed one handed weapon with a reinforced shield with a max stamina enchant on it. Back bar, you can do whatever you want, restore stamina poison. You could also do. Um, uh, what's it called? Restore Stamina Enchant here. It's really up to you what you want to do. And then in terms of my jewelry traits, optimally you'd want to run probably Infused for the weapon damage. But right now I have Healthy on just simply because um, I don't have my other 
transmuted jewelry on this guy right now. And so I just did healthy with him. And normally what you would do is you would run infused for your jewelry traits, and then you would move some points from stamina into HP to make sure that you have a respectable health pool. But if for some reason you don't have transmute stones, you could also do it this way where you run triple healthy, and then you just put all 64 points into stamina. Somebody's clearly hearing me, healing me a lot with cauterize. I'm super healed up, boys. Super, super healed up. Now, in terms of our skill lineup, guys, our first skill is going to be Dizzying Swing. So, Dizzy, because this is a uh, basically a build built around one big, huge smack, we're going to be doing a Dizzying Swing Shulk's Dawnbreaker combo. Similarly to how on my Stamp Crow, I do a Dizzying Swing Blast Bones Onslaught combo. So, Dizzying Swing hits for instant physical damage and sets them off balance, which gives us Exploiter from the Ritual uh, Tree and their champion points. And then if you hit the enemy again, you stun them for two seconds. Or if they're immune to off balance, you just snare them. Or you could also choose to do a Medium Weave to get a stun on the off balance target. You also do have Shulks, which deals 13.7k poison damage to enemies in front of you. And then it will resurface again, dealing an additional 13.7k poison damage. So, these two skills combined together are a lot of upfront bursts, also combined with Dawn breaker giving us a massive damage spike so this is going to be a 15.2k physical damage to enemies in front of you with a dot over six seconds and this also is a really nice cc so it's a good way to cc your opponents combos really well with on breaker and shulks just giving you one massive smack of damage now i know that shulks does not give as much pen anymore or doesn't give the pen anymore that it used to give so what you could do instead if you do not want to run dawnbreaker and want the extra penetration is you go ahead and run onslaught so that is an option as well we have executioner for our execute this is also going to be what is giving us ultimate back from our asylum great sword so by hitting an opponent with this you are going to just be executing them the lower health they are from 50 percent up to 400 percent damage uh, additional damage dealt so really really strong execute our movement skill on our front bar is going to be bird of prey giving us major expedition for six seconds and increasing movement by increasing movement speed by 30 percent and this also gives us minor berserk increasing our damage done by five percent so really really good passive slot gives us passive damage from our passives from the animal companions line as well as the minor berserk and it gives us some good movement speed even on a heavy armor build we also do run forward momentum as our snare and root immunity skill giving us major brutality for a 20% boost to our weapon damage and a 20% boost to our stamina recovery via minor endurance. And it's also a cheap skill, so really good to keep us mobile, give us weapon damage, and give us additional stamina recovery. I already went over Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker also does give us some passive weapon damage too for being on the front bar, so that's also a good thing. Because this is such a high HP build, we do run Arctic Blast. Arctic Blast gives us a really meaty heal because of the fact that we run so much health. So this gives us a nice heal over five seconds, um, as well as an additional heal as well. This also pulses frost damage around us and then stuns enemies hit by it. So really, really good skill. Um, I've tried Leeching Vines here because I did miss Leeching Vines and I liked it when I used it in the past, but... Arctic Blast, in my opinion, is just a really, really strong heal, especially for a high health build, so I have been finding it to be superior at the moment. We have Resolving Vigor as our hot in the back bar. Not much to say about it. It's part of the healing package with our Arctic Blast. These two heals give us a nice, nice heal over time when combined. If we do find ourselves needing a burst heal, I would like to run Soothing Spores. Um, so... Just a good way to get some instantaneous healing from the green balance skill line. So absolutely do love that. We also have Ice Fortress, which gives us minor protection, 5% uh, damage reduced. And then we also get our major resolve, our our armor buff from this. So very, very good armor buff. Um, minor protection attached to our armor buff is fantastic. I run Blue Betty on this build. So the reason I run Blue Betty and not the bull netch is because for me i find myself in need of the magicka more than i do the stamina uh ice fortress is expensive arctic blast is expensive um bird of prey not expensive but i use bird of prey a lot <laughs> so between having ice fortress and arctic blast consuming so much of our magicka i like to have additional magicka to actually use bird of prey because i like to be mobile when i play stamped in um, so for that reason, I do find the heal, the magicka restoration for, the blue, for blue Betty necessary for me. If you do not find it necessary, if you are good at managing your magicka, you, you know, you feel that you don't need this, you can go ahead and run bull Netch. But for me personally, I find that I need the magicka sustain. So I do run the blue Betty. Uh, this also gives us our major brutality for 20% additional weapon damage and removes a negative effect every five seconds. So just a fantastic skill. I do run the Werewolf Transformation on the back bar, only for the 50% stamina recovery. Literally use it for no other purpose. So in terms of the stats for this build, we have 11.5k maximum magicka. When we have our minor toughness, we have 31 
0.7k maximum health, really, really high max HP pool. 32k stamina front bar and 33 on the back bar. I have 1700 stamina recovery, uh, 2900 unbuffed weapon damage front bar. Remember, that's going to spike super, super high with all of our stuff and 2800 on the back bar. Uh, weapon critical is basically negligible. We don't really worry about it in this build. Uh, you run 15.5k spell and physical resist on the front bar with 20k in the back bar and 3200 crit resist again that'll probably be a little bit lower um if you do actually have the correct traits also these stats might look a little bit different if you're traded according to my website so that is just something to keep in mind in terms of races there's two races i personally recommend if you want to go the more mobile offensive option with good sustain i recommend going with a wood elf if you want the tankier option i recommend going with a nord in terms of other things we are running the warrior mundus we also are running the lava foot soup and saltrice buff food for maximum stamina and stamina recovery and in terms of potions you have two options you can either go for a crit option and go with the major savagery potions giving you a huge boost your weapon critical restoration of health and stam or you can go for tri stat pots restoring your health magicka and stamina and giving you a major recoveries for all three so it's really up to you what you feel that you need um I think if you run bull net, you're definitely going to want to run tripods. With blue Betty, I still run tripods too, personally. But if you're like, okay, that's way too much magic recovery, then just go ahead and use the crit pots. I have them on me in case I need them. So you can get really, really big damage spike if you do use the weapon crit pots. Now, in terms of our champion points, we are running 27 into blessed, 81 to master at arms, 37 into precise strikes, 50 into piercing, and 75 into mighty. 72 in Ironclad, 41 into Resistant, 44 into Thick Skin, 43 into Hardy and Elemental Defender with 27 into Quick Recovery, 56 into Warlord, 2 into Sprinter, uh, 37 into Tenacity, 75 into Mooncalf with 44 into Shadow Ward and 56 into Tumbling. You could also play with these uh, as you want depending on how much you block or dodge roll. Now, in terms of an actual rotation, you're going to want to maintain Blue Betty on yourself at all times. You're going to want to maintain Ice Fortress on yourself at all times. And you're going to want to maintain Forward Momentum on yourself at all times. It's going to maximize your sustain, damage, and tankiness. From there, the rotation is pretty simple. You're going to want to use, in conjunction, Subterranean Assault. Go in, hit your target with a Dizzying Swing, and then hit them with a Dawnbreaker. All three of those things will deal damage all at the same time. And you are going to smack your opponent for a ton of pressure. You are then going to want to go into Execute spam if they're not already dead and then bam your target's dead uh be sure though before you go into com before well make sure you're in combat but before you like actually start to engage your opponent and you're going for that big burst pop your potion on your back bar to make sure that you get the bonus from your clever alchemist you know if you make that mistake i do still sometimes too um where you pop the potion on the wrong bar you're not going to be getting the bonus from clever alchemist so that is a huge amount of weapon damage that you're missing out on in terms of playing defensively, you're going to want to make sure that your armor buff, like I said, is up. You're going to want to use Arctic Blast. You're going to want to use Vigor. That's two really strong hots ticking on you. And then if you feel that you need more HP, go into your burst heal. Then from there, depending on if you're going more block or dodge roll centric, choose to either block or dodge roll. But that's it, guys. That's pretty much the updated Nature's Wrath build for the Markarth patch. Hope you guys found this build video enjoyable. If you did, smack a like on it. If you guys want to see more content from Nemesis Esports, various gaming content they post here, feel free to hit that sub button. I also do have a written version of this build on my website, dotsgaming.com. And if you do want to see other Elder Scrolls Online builds, you can find them there. I also will be posting more builds here on the Nemesis Esports channel. And you, I think... MSS Esports is going to be doing a giveaway for Markarth at some point, so you guys feel free to check the description and pin comments and all those places to see if a giveaway is posted. So thank you guys so much for stopping by today. I appreciate it. I'm Dots Gaming, and I will see everybody soon.